Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. We got a few things to get to today I'm looking forward to. Um, the other day I was reminiscing about uh, July 1977 flashback. Some of you might remember that uh, when New York or a lot of the East Coast here had a big blackout. Remember that? Do you guys, are, uh, and you know, I, I must say that for most of New York, the one thing we do have good here is we have a good electrical infrastructure. We haven't had too many problems with electricity. I can count the number of blackouts we've had in the last, in my lifetime on one hand. So it's been good. However, um, back in that in 77, it was, uh, it was a, a trying time for a lot of people, but not for us. I was a new Boy Scout at the time and I was just loving it. We had all lights and propane stoves and we just had a ball for a couple of days with no electricity um but however it was at that moment that i became so interested in how we get our electricity because we really do take it for granted and uh when you think about the uh, infrastructure that it takes to get from your power making whatever it is for us a lot of it's niagara falls and then we have generators here that work off of fossil fuel but um all that power has to come from somewhere and get to us and it's just amazing how it is and so ever since i was a kid i'd be interested in and i'd be looking at the the electrical pole you know the stations and even when i love uh, big power stations transfer stations things like that that's why i love old electrical stuff you know um and that's why today i wanted to touch on one of the things that i became interested in not too long ago. Let's check it out. Now, unlike many of you, I didn't live or grow up near railroad tracks, so I didn't see a lot of these on the pole and grow up around them. I do remember seeing them when we drive up to Pennsylvania or whatever. This here is known as a glass insulator. And these were developed in the 1800s. They were put up on telephone poles and they would insulate the pole from the wire that gets uh, run across here. You, I'll show you how that is later on. But, a, you know, a telegraph or power line would come across and they had to insulate that line from the pole because there's no outer jacket on the lines. There's no rubber coating or anything because it would be too heavy. So what they do is they would run it across here and put a uh, kind of almost like a strip of bailing wire and hold it and wrap it against this and that's what support it. Uh, and this way, when the electricity or whatever, or whatever was running through here, it wouldn't ground out to the pole. Now, conductivity-wise, water uh, isn't that conductive. It's, you know, it's nothing like a very conductive uh, material. But water can be, especially with higher voltages, can be a little conductive. And you could get some sparking, whatever. So they, they designed these in a certain way that... Um, not only would they insulate, and that's what they're called insulators, insulate the telephone pole from the wire, but the way they were designed too were also to shed water so that they wouldn't have a stream of water. So as you can see, the water would come here and drip. These are all meant to drip and to separate the water so you wouldn't have a stream. Even these little points down here, these little points are called drip points. Very amazing, you know, the design of these. And, and they would pump these out, and, and there were so many different styles and shapes and designs. And they became collectible to a lot of people. And a lot of these were destroyed. Hunters would shoot them off poles years ago, and they would just, you know, but a lot, there's still a lot around there, and a lot of people collect them. So this one here is a, you can see the name, it's a Hemingway. Hemingway is a, uh, is a very uh, common and popular brand. This is a number 40, and uh, they're usually stamped on there. Um, and these were, again, like I told you, put on the poles on different sides, and there were different numbers of them on the poles. There was a whole bunch of different brackets. In fact, I have a bracket here. It's one type of bracket. A lot of times they were put on wooden posts, but they had a threaded inside. You see that's threaded in there? This one here is made of like a lead, and you can see here it's screw, it would screw on. And that's it. That's it on there tight. And this will go on to the pole. And you had a square nut. And this was galvanized. We're going to clean all this up. And uh, I have a, a nice collection of insulators. But uh, we have a good friend of the show, Lee Brewer, who is a, uh, a real 
uh, expert when it comes to certain type of insulator. He collects beehive type insulators and he wrote the book and he sent me a book on one. But what we're going to do is, um, the reason I'm bringing this up is you remember last week we talked about Barkeeper's Friend. A lot of you purchased this since then when we did the ruler. This, how I found out about this was that's what you use to clean insulators. Barkeeper's Friend. Same thing. You make either a slurry of it and you could you know, wipe a slurry around and you let it sit because what happens is these were a lot of times by railroad tracks, which ran on either steam or diesel and you would get, it would all turn black in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, we're going to put it in a container and fill it up with a solution of Barkeeper's Friend. And, uh, and we're going to put this into the container with water and the Barkeeper's Friend and let that sit for uh, overnight and uh, it'll loosen up all that darkness. Now remember what this looks like. This one here is not that dirty, but remember what it looks like. It's kind of, you really can't see through it too good, uh, but we're gonna clean this up and then we're gonna make a lamp out of it. What do you say about that? Now you don't need a lot of the uh, cleaner, a few tablespoons full in there. Let that soak, warm water. Uh, the warmer the water, the better. The thing is, though, you got to be careful with the insulators because they are stress-proof to meaning if you take a cold insulator and put it in hot water, you could crack it, just like with a lot of glass. So uh, if you're going to use warm water, be very careful. Try and warm up the insulator slowly. And uh, and there we have, we have lukewarm water. The barkeeper's room going to sit that, let that sit overnight, and then it'll, you know, that darkness will get in there with small brushes and that. But uh, right now... Let's clean this up, which you don't usually see too much when you talk about insulators is how they were hung. Like I told you, they came with wooden ones, uh, wooden pegs, wooden ones that would hold on the side of the pole. There was a, a lot of different ways to suspend them. Usually it was wood, but this one's a lead one and they're real nice because they, they're smooth screwing into the insulator. Okay, a few minutes on the wire brush. This cleaned up absolutely beautiful, you know. And uh, believe it or not, these have become quite collectible too because a lot of people like to... Uh, Put them on but i'm going to put up a uh, kind of a mock telephone pole with a few of these in front of my house and uh we did the nut clean this was kind of frozen on there but and this is the square washers they used there was probably plate steel that they just punched a hole in and there we go so this one's ready now tomorrow we'll come back take out that insulator from the soak and see what it looks like okay this is after a night of soaking in the barkeeper's friend do you see the difference you see how beautiful that looks now? Now, what I wanted to do is make a lamp. Yeah, a lamp. Okay, let's, how do we do that? Well, I took an old piece of, this is just a piece of cedar that I have around piece. And what we're going to do, we're going to chuck this up into the lathe and we'll make a little, see if we can't make a little base for this. Put a little light in there. Have some fun. Okay, once you start playing on the lathe, you can't stop. So uh, what I did was, this will be the top. I had to put a hole in here because that's where we're going to pass. The plug has to pass through, you see? So there has to be a hole here. We're going to expand this here so that the, uh, the insulator won't slip off the base. Uh, we're going to expand that ring. And we also made some feet on the lathe out of Delrin. We haven't done Delrin work in a while, so we made some nice feet. And we're going to drill some holes and press fit these in. And that will raise it up. And hopefully a little light will come through the bottom. I always like that look. But there we go. Let's get back to the lathe and start finishing this up. Okay, now here we do. Our base is done. You can see we added those feet, those homemade feet. And again, rise it up so it don't lean on the plug. We got this from Amazon. They come in a pack. You can buy them one or four. I bought them four. Half watt bulb, LED. This is meant to go in like those blow molds where you have a thing, but it fits perfect in here. I wax this up with some 
Uh, first time I use this, no streak glass wax polish were very nice. This gets pushed into here and these stainless steel spring will hold it in there so it doesn't come out, you know? And then this will get pushed. Now these grooves here match identical to the, the drip points here. And uh, let's put it together. Now you can see this fits on here like a glove. It won't spin off or fall off. The legs are nice and there we go. So let's plug it in and see what this looks like. Okay, first time, oh, there we go. Very nice. We have a inline switch. Like I said, it's only a half a watt. Let's see what it looks like in the dark. Okay, there we go. Uh, you can see, and I got that little bit of light coming from the bottom that I was hoping for, but there we go. That'll make a nice little shelf light. It uh, looks a little brighter on, on camera here because, uh, there we go, I dulled it a little bit, but you can see because of the, this camera picks up a, a lot of low light, but it throws off a little bit of light. Half a watt, doesn't get hot because it's an LED bulb. And we have it on a nice little base. This one's in the can. Okay, so in closing, that was a nice little project to start off the week. Um, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again on Wednesday. Take care now. Bye-bye.